Another class that we have uh, to look at is in B 2 C is this three uh, classifications convenience, shopping and speciality. Now, convenience means we often also call them staple products. Uh, staple products are products that you consume every day. Uh, these are actually uh, mostly products that uh, go towards our subsistence. So, food products, uh, beverages are uh, good examples of convenience products. And uh, obviously, as you can see here, because we are consuming it almost every day, uh, these products have uh, a high frequency purchase process, because you are consuming it every day. Uh, usually, uh, per unit value is low, uh, just as like a packet of biscuit or uh, a kg of uh, wheat, a cup like this. Uh, these are uh, the cup may be in the next category, uh, which is uh, shopping. So, shopping products like this cup is you do not actually buy it every day. Uh, uh, you will buy it, it will uh, be used for some time, but these are fragile, this may break after some time, then you may have to buy again. Now, the, you can see the distinction that when you buy a cup versus when you buy say sugar, uh, the sugar you are buying for everyday consumption, you will not spend that much of time, uh, what we call involvement uh, in making that purchase decision. So, which means that from left to right on this convenience shopping speciality, the consumer's involvement in decision making uh, flows uh, from a lower level to a higher level, uh, which means that decisions taken for shopping products like this cup may entail more search for information, may mean some discussion, because you may actually try to buy a cup which uh, is uh, if this has broken, then the next one you want to buy, you can you want to see that your crockeries have the similar kind of designs. So, there are some um, flow and compatibility and such issues. So, which means you will be spending more time in making that decision. So, this will be a higher level of involvement, uh, higher level of uh, knowledge exchange information seeking. And finally, we have so. Uh, clothes, uh, uh, this kind of uh, household stuff, uh, these are shopping products. So, these are again relatively lower priced, uh, but uh, purchased less frequently, uh, but even then it uh, reasonably frequently. Uh, so, like your shoes for example, you will buy it, maybe you will not buy a shoe every day, but uh, you will buy it maybe every year or every two years uh, and you will may apply uh, a little bit more decision making in buying which, what kind of shoe for what purpose, uh, for what design, for what style. Uh, and then finally, we come specialty products uh, where actually we spend uh, uh, like, a, like a car will be a specialty product, where the decision making even at a consumer level may involve consultation you will seek more information uh, when you are buying a car as opposed to when you buy you are buying uh, crockery. And uh, so, this is higher level of involvement, higher level of knowledge exchange, higher level of information seeking, higher ticket value meaning the uh, price that you pay and bought. Ev if you buy this every year, you will buy a car maybe every 5 years or 7 years or 10 years. So, you can see therefore, as you move from left to right, the level of involvement changes, the level of complexity or information seeking or knowledge exchange uh, enhances and also uh, the price per unit uh, goes from lower to higher and uh, frequency of buying uh, goes up from higher to lower and so on. So, you can uh, as you apply your mind to these three classes, you can see how different they are, but uh, in terms of their uh, elements that customer uh, that satisfies uh, uh, customers, those remain the same. That means, you need to make good products, you need to be uh, uh, you need to associate them with good services, so that they can perform uh, the customers 
jobs more efficiently, uh, uh, more effectively. So, all those aspects remain the same across the spectrum. We then come to some aspects of uh, product management. Uh, we will discuss some of these in more detail in later uh, sessions like a product line. So, for example, uh, biscuits from a particular company again I will use that example or tea uh, from a particular company they may have uh, different types of tea you know you may have earl grey, you may have breakfast tea, you may have green tea, you may have herbal tea, uh, you may have uh, tea from Assam uh, which is considered to be uh, sort of strong liquor less flavor or it may be from Darjeeling which is high in flavor, but less in liquor. So, there will be different properties and all put together will be the product line the T range from say uh, uh, Lipton or Brook Bond or uh, Tata Tetley and so on. So, these are brands under the brands there are therefore, a line or variants of products. So, product line may also mean product variants and this is needed because uh, the growth potential for a single product will be more limited than a range of products. So, you are still fulfilling the same purpose as tea as a beverage as a casual beverage, but you are uh, you, you are responding to different tastes you are responding to different sections of customers you are responding to different profile of customers and, and that allows you uh, different avenues for growth. So, this is the product line concept then product mix product mix are uh, a, you know there will be uh, like a mix width as we discussed say for example, uh, uh, some of these beverage companies have so many different types of uh, a product. So, that is the width and within the same product there may be different uh, sizes packages and there may be uh, different uh, types of Assam tea from the same company. Uh, some may be in the form of granules, some may be in the form of uh, leaves. So, this is actually what we call width and length and then all put together it gives us uh, the dimensionality of the product mix coming from a particular company. Making this product mix decision again this is an important uh, part of uh, what we call the uh, marketing mix uh, that means, how we uh, uh, take our strategic decisions with respect to resource allocation in marketing. Uh, when we discuss that we will discuss more about uh, how we make product mix decisions, but fundamentally we uh, make a judicious mix of depth length width and so on. So, that we can uh, respond to all kinds of market opportunities and when uh, a particular say um, a, a biscuit company introduces a variants. Um, uh, so, you have normal biscuit then you introduce say for digestive which is a high fiber biscuit used usually in the morning and to give you the necessary um, food balance uh, of uh, higher fiber products. So, that will be line extension we are extending uh, the line, but if along with uh, biscuits a particular company now start offering uh, some uh, uh, maybe condiments like uh, jam. Uh, or uh, cheese, uh, then that will not be line extension, that, but that will be uh, expansion, that will be a different uh, series. And last concept for this session uh, that I want to introduce is this concept of product life cycle. That means, just like us, like every almost everything on in, in this world, uh, uh, we have evolution, we have initial production it is like birth of a product line and then that product becomes popular uh, more people buy that product more products are produced. So, we have growth and then after some time 
uh, that product may not be fashionable, that product may not be that useful, something else might have come and therefore, that product then kind of matures and declines. So, exactly not similar, because it is not that the uh, matured people or older people are uh, no longer required, uh, but here in products what happens is as you can see say for example, uh, say this light weight carry on bags uh, and often uh, these uh, introduction of new products this uh, introduction stage happens due to uh, changes in regulations. Like for example, all airlines uh, change their uh, baggage allowance from 20 kilograms to 15 kilograms. In many places uh, in some countries uh, you have to actually pay extra for the check in luggage even up at 15 kg. You are only allowed a carry on handbag, uh, which may be allowed up to 7 kilograms or 9 kilograms. So, as you can see earlier at 20 kilograms, you did not bother so much about uh, the weight of the bag itself or uh, the, the bag earlier used to you know you had porters who will carry your they were their professional carriers, but today in most cases we do not have porters uh, in so many countries it is almost impossible to have people because it is very expensive as service. And so, we need very lightweight um, uh, bags which can be handled by even children or uh, people uh, more uh, you know lesser uh, capable people. So, we have now these introduction of four wheel 360 degree turn very lightweight uh, bags uh, and, and as you can you will see a lot of new evolution happy, happening there. So, for example, we can have the same uh, structure you can sometimes carry it like a backpack, you can sometimes wheel it, you can uh, sometimes sling it and all these introductions are coming due to changes in regulations changing in traveling style, uh, changing in consumer taste and so on. There will be growth uh, phases like say free Wi-Fi or uh, HD TV or LEDs, uh, LED TV. Uh, these are all um, growth uh, products at the moment, but after some time uh, they may become mature like the microwave oven or for example, the MP3 player used to be so popular just uh, uh, you know even when Apple introduced iPod, uh, it, it was actually an evolved form of the MP3 player. It distinguished itself because it did very good integration of the hardware and software, the product itself uh, with the software uh, I, through iTune or the customer interface that is where the design aspect comes. But today uh, MP3 players uh, however, well designed are uh, you know no longer in uh, vogue uh, say iPod is actually now an obsolete product, because all those features have already been absorbed by the iPhone. Similarly, a product may get absorbed in another product, a two products classes may get merged. For example, earlier people had cameras and people had phones, now they have got merged and uh, even the digital camera which came later uh, the, the normal film camera, the digital camera sales are also declining, because the phone cameras are becoming more and more capable. So, this is this is that makes products evolve technologies changing tastes, uh, changing pattern of demands can actually now make uh, tablets of new types far more uh, growth oriented than even laptops which at one time actually replaced desktops or actually complemented desktops for different type of functions. And of course, uh, you can have products in decline like wired phones or uh, pagers, uh, you know some of you might not have even seen a pager um, or a very big size bulky desktop computer. Nowadays, uh, you know desktop computers do not have a separate tower and a screen, they are all in one everything has been compacted. So, you take less space, the uh, work stations can be better designed and so on. So, products evolve, services evolve, together 
the way customers purposes are fulfilled uh, evolve. Uh, but remember always that all these are driven primarily by the choices made by customers. So, understanding customers is extremely important, uh, they are changing uh, requirements are extremely important if we have to manage the product life cycle well. Uh, I have a couple of uh, slides here to explain in a little bit more detail what is the introductory stage, um, what is the growth stage and we will later on see how our strategies of managing this growth will have to be well understood, so that we can uh, be relevant even at the uh, decline stage. Uh, so, it is not that our uh, even actually the, the normally when we draw you see on the x axis we have time, this shows the cumulative sales and profits, but at an individual level even at the maturity stage as we will see later on because of the change in market structure, because of the shakeouts that happen even at the decline stage there are companies who uh, with clever planning and strategy can make money. The life cycle can however, ex be extended uh, for example, the purpose for which we need something like a camera and the purpose for which we need something like a phone those purposes will remain the same but will evolve, they may come together to create a different class of products and we are seeing these days these uh, boundary overlaps continuously because uh, you know like TV and computers are now getting integrated. So, we have this smart TVs which can also be um, uh, used as a computer. So, we have this what we call a battle going on for the screen at your home, which screen? Uh, your tablet, your phone, your TV, your computer, there is a battle going on and the products are evolving in response to those uh, changes in the customer's uh, demand profile. So, we will uh, discuss challenges coming out of these evolutions, challenges coming out of these um, integration in different ways between uh, tangible and intangible aspect. Uh, between hardware and software and we will see how we manage today this high velocity of change, uh, which is uh, as people say that the number of products, variants, completely new products, services introduced in the last 10 years will be far more than introduced over the last 100 years. So, that is why today's world is a high velocity world and understanding the challenges in the goods and services, challenges coming in the product market and how to respond to them will be the keynote of the different discussions that we will be having over the next 4 weeks. Thank you.